Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm finding my art supplies in the hardware store because that's the theme for this month's Let's Play. And each month, each month, each week during the month, I'm going to share with you a different way that I use that to help myself play. So what did I find this time at the hardware store? Sandpaper. Plain old sandpaper. I actually got this multi-pack, 20 sheets in there, three different weights, grains, whatever they call them, coarse, fine, extra fine, that kind of thing. So I had this idea when I saw it, and I thought, what if I could get the look of chalk and a chalkboard but with something that wouldn't smear because if I use chalk on a chalkboard it smears all the time on me and I didn't want that in my art journal I wanted something that wouldn't smear so I thought maybe this would do it so I decided to give it a try and yes indeed I was able to get the look of chalk with something that would not smear like chalk well enough of my talking come check out the play so this is the multi-pack of sandpaper that I bought. It has 20 sheets in it. I think it cost me around 10 bucks and it has three different kinds of textures or weights or grains or whatever they call it for sandpaper from a coarse all the way to a fine. So I took one of each kind and I'm gonna experiment and play. Now that brown, you know it's not gonna stay brown with me. I had to turn it into a different color. And for some reason I was feeling like trying black. So I'm actually putting just plain old black acrylic paint on it. But this one that's super coarse, um, this sandpaper really absorbs a lot of paint. So it was really hard to spread and smear it around with the brush. So that's why you're seeing me hit it with water. However, if you hit black paint with water, do you know what it does? It actually waters down the paint. Yeah, really, it's shocking. I know this was something you had no idea was going to happen if you put water in paint, right? Um, so, you know, it kind of made it a little bit thinner, so I'll, I'm hoping that dries quite as dark as what I'm wanting, so I keep fiddling with it, thinking if I go over some of the places that looked a little thin, maybe it won't show when it dries. As I move on to the ones that are finer, the paint spreads a whole lot more easily. And on this one, I didn't have to add the water, so I was able to keep more of that super strong black look of the paint. Well, here are all three of them painted and dried. And you know what? That one that I hit with a bunch of water totally dried wonderfully. And I'm using the super coarse one right here. And I'm taking plain old Crayola crayons. You know that cheap box of crayons you buy when back to school time? That's all I'm using. And I'm just kind of hitting it with a bunch of scribble writing. I wanted to see if I could get the look of a chalkboard using crayons. Because I love the look of chalkboards and writing with chalk on the black kind of thing except that chalk smears pretty easily, but I really like the look of it. And so I'm hoping this can give me the look of chalk without things that smear. And I have to say, I'm feeling kind of addicted to this as I add different colors to it, trying to see which ones will show up. I want colors that are really bright and vibrant against the black, and I gotta say the yellow and the green pretty much look the same. I think that's kind of weird, so I guess I'm not gonna get my super bright yellow with it. Dark colors strangely don't show up on a dark background, but I wonder what white will do. I'm wondering if my white crayon will really pop against this. Will it look like chalk? Because that's the big test. Can I get white to look like chalk? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. I'm loving how that white pops against it, and it totally has that chalk vibe to it. Doesn't smear when I'm doing that, although if I have little bits of crayon around, those kind of do stick to things. Well, all of a sudden I started thinking about sidewalk chalk and the things that my kids and I used to draw on the driveway. This totally has me thinking about that, so I'm going to go with it. I am going to draw like a little kid. My inner kindergartner is coming out to play as I'm just drawing some really, really basic flowers here. And the white, you know, I like white, but you know me, whenever there's white space, I want to cover it up. So I am going to go over the white with different colors of crayons. That way I get some pops of color, but I still get that feeling of sidewalk chalk. I did learn that if I put the white down first, the colors will pop more. If I just put the color straight on there, it doesn't pop as much. And if you've seen many of my videos, you know how much I love to make color pop. Now this video, along with all of the videos in the Let's Play series, are all about how to actually let yourself play. I didn't always have the ability to play, and I had to figure it out kind of the long and hard way. And it, I, rather than making you have to go through all that, I want to share some of the ways that I learned to let myself play. And one of them is by using materials in ways they weren't meant to be used. There is absolutely no wrong way for me to use sandpaper painted in an art journal. 
And the reason why there's no wrong way is there's no right way because this isn't what the manufacturer intended for it. So that gives me a whole lot of freedom and allows me to play. And that enabled me to get in touch with that memory of that sidewalk chalk with my kids from so long ago. Now another component of Let's Play is the weekly link party. And this is where you get to share your play. Whatever you're playing with, doesn't matter whether it's on the theme or not on the theme, because play is play. Anything where you are letting yourself create, to me, that is play. And then you can share it with others, be inspired by what they're doing, and you can help inspire others. Truly, everybody who shares their play helps inspire someone else to play. Well, now I am going to cut this out, not fussy cut it, because that's not me, that's not play to me, that sounds like work. So I'm not fussy cutting, I'm just going really big and loosely around these flowers so I can get it into my art journal. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you'd like to join into the link party, which I hope you do, because I'd love to see what you're creating, you can find that all over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com, and there'll be a link down below in the video description here on YouTube, or maybe popping up on the screen that'll take you right to this direct blog post. So I grabbed a page in my art journal, and can you see all the paint smears and smudges up there? I thought that was so perfect to go along with how the sidewalk or the driveway would look when we were playing with chalk, because there were always smears everywhere. I'm just going to hit the back of the sandpaper with, this I think is called an ATG gun, but basically any kind of dry adhesive. And I'm using a dry adhesive just because sandpaper is really kind of heavy, so I got to have something strong enough to hold it in place, and I just didn't feel like dealing with a wet adhesive. So that's why I used it, because it's what I felt like doing at the moment. Well, now that I've got flowers in my art journal page, there's something missing that we always seem to add every time when my kids and I were out there on the driveway, and that's a sun. Well, my inner kindergartner is more than happy to oblige and create a very childlike sun so that it radiates some sunshine all over this page. But I gotta tell you, even my little inner kindergartner doesn't like white space. All that white space that's on that journal page is really not sitting very well with either grown-up me or kindergarten me. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. I'm gonna have to get some color in there. Now I want to stay with the kindergarten vibe, the kid vibe, so I'm going to grab a stencil that actually has little kids writing all over it, and I'm going to stencil that into the white space. I'm going to be using an ink pad to stencil it, so what I need is some kind of applicator to get the ink from the pad onto the paper. What I'm doing is cutting off a piece of cut and dry foam, and that way I've got little mini applicators to go, because I think I might use a couple of colors. I'm feeling the rainbow coming, maybe. So I'm just going to dab that right onto the ink pad, and then I can go and just brush it right over, pounce it up and down, over anywhere on the stencil that I want it to go. And I've got a quick and easy way to stencil. It's very, very clean, and it's very, very easy for me to work around the shapes that are there, because I don't want to stencil on top of the sandpaper. I want to work around it, and using something like an ink pad makes it very easy to do that. And of course, yes, there was going to be more color. One color just wasn't enough for me, so I grabbed some of the blue. These are Adirondack inks that I'm using, and I just want some soft color back there, or at least that's what I think I want back there. Now this stencil is one that I designed for Stencil Girl products and it's called Kindergarten Writing and it is actually taking the writing of kids, my kids actually some of their old papers from when they were little, which kind of horrified them that I did that, but they got over it. And so what I'm doing is just grabbing random parts of it now just to fill in because I want a couple of colors going on. I want it to look like lots of layering and writing all over the place. And now it's time for me to add a little bit of scribbled journaling. I actually took a crayon and sharpened it inside a pencil sharpener. And I got to tell you, it sure gets shavings everywhere. So do that over a trash can and you'll even see a whole bunch of it stuck to my hand. It's almost like it's got some kind of static charge to it that it's totally sticking to me. But I've basically got a fine tip on that crayon so I can then write along the stems, capture my feelings that I'm having right now. And yeah, really got to go brush that white stuff off of my hand because anywhere that it lands onto the black sandpaper, it's kind of get caught and snagged there. But that's kind of fitting for how it pretty much worked with sidewalk chalk, isn't it? Because anywhere that stuff would go, it would leave a mark. And I thought I was done at this point, but my inner kindergartner was so not done. I didn't even have a camera on. I was so sure I was done. I grabbed a black crayon and I am just tracing over some of the writing. I think my inner kindergartner is just looking for any excuse to keep a crayon in that hand and keep it playing and doodling and drawing over things. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this week's Let's Play video. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, you know I would be grateful if you shared it with someone that you think might enjoy having a little bit of play in their day. 
You can find more of what I'm doing over on my blog at acolorfuljourney.com, where I've got things like a newsletter that always has a freebie download or some kind of treat in it, as well as my free workshop called Permission to Play. So lots of things to check out over on the blog. Well, thanks so much for joining me, and thanks so much for being a part of this colorful journey.